everything we need to get by. Never give up. After more than 40 years of gymnastics, the UCLA Bruins begin their final Pac-12 conference campaign tonight inside Pauley Pavilion. But before we say our teary goodbyes, it's time to meet the Bruins. UCLA's annual introduction of their world famous and nationally revered gymnastics squad on display for the first time it's live and only on the Pac-12 network. Hi everybody, Jim Watts alongside former UCLA star and still a house favorite, it's Janae Honest. Great to see you again. Uh, this is our holiday spectacular, but we have to tell you at the top, it's not a real meet. It's an exhibition. There's no scoring. There's no judges. But even with just one team on the floor, still been a busy week for these gymnasts. Yes, a busy week indeed. The stress was really high for this team due to finals week, but they took it day by day. And now that it's finally Friday, they are celebrating the end of finals and the start of the season. I remember uh, Friday after finals week. I don't think I was in the gym. Uh, the UCLA 2024 edition loaded as usual. You got four All-Americans. You got two with national team experience, even have an Olympic. But let's start with the fantastic freshman, now a sophomore, Selena Harris, one of the most decorated freshman campaigns ever. Pac-12 Freshman of the Year, all-conference on every event, and a seven-time All-American. And the coaches believe and that she's going to pick up right where she left off. And she has this star quality because she possesses this competitive fire. She just loves to compete, doesn't get she nervous of, and she is known for her consistency and just a great athlete all around. I love watching her. You nailed that. She had hits 50. 55 last year. 80% of her routines were 9-9 or better. The Texan and freshman, Caitlin Rosen, U.S. national team experience and a five-time U.S. championships qualifier. And we can most definitely expect to see her in the all-around. And freshman year, you're adjusting to a lot of things, but the coaches say that she's been handling everything so well. And I've seen her practice. She's another well-rounded athlete, and I'm excited to watch her make her mark. And even though it's just an exhibition, tonight will be a dream come true for her. She said she's thought about it since she was a kid. How about the grad student, Naya Reed, last four years at Florida, trading the blue and orange for the blue and gold. I spoke with Janelle, and she said that Naya has made the most positive impact on this team, which is huge as a transfer. She's a fifth year, so she brings the maturity. It was like bringing in another coach to help guide this team. And Naya becoming a Bruin is a big deal because she has the start values, the skill set, and the consistency to help this team be successful. Six-time All-American. UCL advanced all the way to the NCAA championships a year ago, and this team just as talented, ranked number five in the preseason season poll, will beat the Christmas rush and meet the Bruins on a Friday. Christmas Westwood, Lars, Beam, and Floor, and as she just teased, at some point during the season, she's going to add Vault. Madison Animi starts us off on the vault. So the way it's going to go, there's eight of them competing on the vault tonight. And we'll go in order so nothing else happening in the room. You'll see everything tonight. Animi was a regular in the vault lineup last year and was pretty good as well. Ten times. She was 9-8 or better. Paige Anastasi will be our second vaulter tonight. This is Caitlin. Oh. Well, they've changed a little bit of the order on me, so let's uh, let's go to Caitlin Rosen. We talked about her in the open. Caitlin Rosen, the 2020 U.S. national team member and a five-time U.S. championships qualifier. Where First time in Polly. She has a 10.0 star value vault. You're trying to go one and a half, which is really good for this team. You need as many 10.0 star values as possible, so that's really good that they have her on this team. And so, so good. I love. I can't wait to watch her grow. 
All right, we're catching up now. So Anini, Anastasi, Shea Campbell, and now Caitlin Rosen have gone. Another look from the floor cam of Rosen. And no scores tonight. And you and I talked about it before the meet. If you want to throw out, especially on the better performances, if you see a score that uh, that should should get our attention, you go ahead and throw yeah, it out. Absolutely, I like that challenge. <laughs> and here's Selena Harris. We talked about her in our open as well, but we talked about her all last year, the 2023 Pac-12 Freshman of the Year, seven-time All-American, and that's across the board on all five disciplines. Eight times on vault, she went 9-9 nine, nine or better, and she had a 10 at the NCAA Regionals right here. And she was just spectacular on this event. Incredible pop off the horse. Very clean, has the power, and she knows exactly where she is in the air. Just found that landing. I think I would give that a... Uh, love the slow-mo. Uh, maybe Honestly, a little split on the landing, but that's about it. But right? that's because we're watching in a slow-mo. So yeah. I'm going to say... 10.0, maybe 9.975. Not bad for an opening vault. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, she came in. She was so good from the beginning, so polished, and she was at this level already. She amazed us. I mean, she was dominating the Freshman of the Year, or Freshman of the Week award so much, we kind of named it after her. Yes, after it's about the, a month. the Selena Award at this point. Here comes Naya Reed. So Naya Reed is a new face in the building, but not in collegiate gymnastics. If you missed us at the top, transfer after four years at Florida. And she was the SEC runner-up at the league championships on this event. Another 10.0 vault from her. She's going to do a Yurchenko one and a half. And just excellent in the air. Great landing. And listen, this is one of those events that people don't always pay attention to at the end of a meet because it happens so early. But the start value is important, and a lot of teams only have a couple of 10-0s. Yes. Do we know what UCLA is going to have in the lineup? UCLA currently has one, two, three. They have, I think, four or five. Yes. Yeah, well, so. that's great. Mm -hmm. That bodes well for them. They put up big numbers. UCLA was top 10 on every event and right at the top 10 on this event. So statistically, this was the team's weakest event, but they had three gymnasts ranked in the top 10 individually. So you put it in italics when you say a weakness. Clara Wren, next to go. Clara Wren is a sophomore from San Marcos down in, uh, in Northern San Diego. Had a couple of exhibitions before making her scoring debut at Utah. Had a 9725, so still new to this, going through everything in her head, taking a deep breath and attacking the table. Yes, yeah, she's their vault specialist. And that right there also is another 10.0 vault for them. So she really just needs to dial in on that landing. After speaking with Janelle, she mentioned that she's been working really hard on gaining that confidence so she can consistently be in this lineup. But traditional vault means front handspring entry, so you're not doing the round off by handspring onto the vault. So. Once she gets that landing down, she'll be good to go. Claire is a legacy. Her brother played baseball here at UCLA, went on to play in the Phillies organization. Her dad was a baseball player too. He played in the, uh, in the Montreal system. The old Expos, for those of you who remember that. Alex Irvine in the anchor spot on the first event of the year. Again, just an exhibition. Freshman from Roseville, California. And this is going to be her first performance, the first time Bruin fans have had a chance to see her. Even though it's mock competition, it counts. Look at her face. This is a unique vault coming up. Twisting onto the horse with the pike off. Again, 10.0 start value, so just really cool. I love seeing variety in the NCAA, and she definitely brings that. So we're usually just used to gymnasts not twisting onto the vault, but she does a full twist on and is able to pike out of it, which is really impressive. I love watching that vault. You don't see it very often at all. Alex was really good on this event at the club level. She's the NorCal State vault champion a couple of years ago, 2022. She was also second on the bars and third in the all around in that meet and a national vault bronze medalist that year as well. So that's her event, and we'll see her all season long in the vault lineup for UCLA. We come back, it's on to the bars where UCLA was a top five team a year ago. It's Meet the Bruins, live on the Pac-12 Network.
Get ready for the incredible... Came here, there's like a plethora of things to do. So I love getting out and going places and just exploring. Two things you have to learn uh, living in Los Angeles. The freeways uh, and the right time to go to in and out The worst. For sure. <laughs> I mean, waiting in traffic is crazy here. I wouldn't recommend it at all. <laughs> Appreciate the time. It's great to see you in uh, Brew and Blue. We enjoyed watching you at Florida, but but now we can cheer for you on this side. Yes, thank you. Thanks a lot, Naya. Welcome to Westwood. Thank you. Naya Reed, the graduate transfer, and we just saw her on vault moments ago. We'll see her again later tonight, uh, I believe, on floor. Yeah, she's going to be in the five spot on the floor. Preseason top 10 Oklahoma again. Champions, of course, they're the team to beat. Then Florida, LSU, and then you get into the Pac-12 teams, Utah and UCLA. And look at California at number seven. So three of the top seven from the Conference of Champions. Top to bottom, you know, Oklahoma's number one, but if you look top to bottom in conferences, the Pac-12 has been consistent, it has been polished, it has been professional. You have Olympians, you have national team members, and that stays consistent with this UCLA team. Again, they'll be ranked number five when the season begins. That is exactly the place they finished last year. So we just finished the vault, and now we go to the bars. We got Shea Campbell on bars right now, and she's just so solid and consistent. And the reason why she's in this leadoff spot, because she really sets the tone for the rest of the lineup. Watch her find that landing. Blind landing, too. That's very difficult. Yeah, most of her bars routines last year, 9-8 or better. Got a couple of 9-8-5s back-to-back, end of the season in, in Pac-12 competition. That's Arizona State and Cal. And Shea Campbell, of course, one of the best gymnasts, not just in this conference, but in the country. And going back to 2021, she came in as the Pac-12 Freshman of the Year. This is the lineup. So after Shea, we're gonna see Emma Malabuyo, who was already here and, uh, and chatted with us just a few moments ago. We'll see Harris again, then Rosen. We've seen both of them for the first time tonight. Freddy Esparza will be in the lineup. Mars, Marzetta Frazier in her sixth year at UCLA. Remember, she got a redshirt year for injury, and she got a COVID year as well. The only person I know who was in college longer than that was me. Nine years. Oh, that's a really long time. <laughs> It could ne that could never be me. Well, my dad used to say a lot of people go to college for nine years. They're called doctors. That is true. Oh, my goodness. So a lot of big names in the building. Emma Malabuyo gets ready to go on bars. Is Ma Malabuyo ever not smiling? Every time I've I see always her, seen her smile. I mean, she has to stop right before she begins a routine, and then it comes right back. Even when she's focusing, I feel like it's a little smile yeah. too. I think it I think it just makes her more comfortable, helps her relax. It's really exciting to see her back on the uneven bars, and I think it's because she's been training competing for the Philippines, so it's been a couple, I would say about a year, so I love seeing her back swinging bars, and it's been amazing, I love it. That was a really good routine. Well, we told you, even though it's an exhibition, uh, a lot of big names in the house, and none bigger than, than Jordan Childs. You, you watch her the last two years here at UCLA, a nine-time All-American and a two-time NCAA individual champion last year. This is the first time I've seen you since then. Great to see you, Great Olympic see silver too. medalist, by the way. What was the experience like at the NCAAs last year, winning not one but two individual titles? It was an amazing experience. Being able to be a part of this team has been remarkable. I honestly wouldn't change the world for anything, and just being in that position just to feel like, you know, a leader in so many ways and ending up with two NCAA titles. I was just in awe. It felt like a cherry on top of an amazing experience for sure.
And with training for 2024, yeah. how is that going? Because that's really huge for you. And I always like, how is it going from college world into the mm -hmm. elite world? Because that's a big difference, especially at yes. Staff, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, it's been an experience going from, you know, college to elite, back to college, back to elite. It's an amazing, amazing time. I just love being able to, you know, train and do everything that I'm doing, especially leading up to 24. Here's Selena Harris back on the bar. So Jordan, jump in anytime what you like, what you see. <laughs> okay, I love doing this. Um, Selena is an amazing bar worker. So being able to see her, you know, hear her handstands, her toes pointed, everything like that. That was a great handstand. For me is seeing her do her dismount. And she did it perfectly in my eyes. I would have gave that routine a 10, but you know, I'm not the judge here, so. You can be the judge today. Okay, okay. <laughs> There's no judges today. You can absolutely be the judge today. We know all about Selena's uh, elite experience and with the national team, but coming in as a freshman, I don't know, for me, it was surprising to see how ready she was from the first day. Mm -hmm. How about you guys from inside the team? Because you saw her at workout all the time. Yes, seeing her as a freshman, she was nonstop doing everything that she can to make sure she was ready leading up to her competition. So seeing her hard work and ethic just made me want to work harder. And, you know, we're like two two little peas in a pod in practice all the time. We laugh, we have fun. So seeing her freshman year was amazing. And she also mentioned to me that she doesn't get nervous, which was really cool to hear coming from a freshman. Like, nerves have never really affected her. Yes, obviously, you know, a freshman coming in, it, you may have nerves here and there, but seeing that she just felt at home, it was really cool. Yeah, I loved it. Shoot, you too. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Here's Caitlin Rosen now back on the bars. Rosen, Rosen, the freshman from Texas, so this is a new face. What do you know about Caitlin? Uh, Caitlin, I did uh, elite with her, so seeing her with her elite career coming into college, I can't wait to see how her freshman year turns out. You know, she's a very gifted and talented gymnast, and this definitely is going to be a show to watch for sure. Yep, 2020 U.S. national team and a five-time championships qualifier. Janelle McDonald, first one to come out and greet her. You know, it is amazing to me. I've been around this team now for 20 years and just watching it reload every year uh, as we take a look at uh, some of your accomplishments, uh, the World Championships, that's the team gold medal and the silver at the Olympic Games. Was it always the plan? In when you when you walked out in 2020, were you were you thinking I'm coming back one more time, or was that a decision made a little bit later? That decision coming back was made uh, quite a while later. Um, I did my freshman year, and then towards the end, after NCAA's, I was like, you know what? Like, might as well just try and go for 24. I felt like I wasn't done yet, so I wanted to get that experience, and um, let's see how everything turns out. I wonder because, and I, I've got to work a number of Olympic games in a number of different sports, and a lot of Olympians say it's such a grind and you yes. build your whole life to become an Olympian. You do it, you succeed, you take home a silver medal and you walk out and then for some reason, a couple of months later, you feel, I'm not quite satisfied. Yes. I would like to do that again, <laughs> yes. but it's a big commitment. It is a commitment. It's a huge thing. You know, that year is very hard. You dedicate your whole life to it. It's not just, you know, one year, it's your whole life. So having that experience once before, I feel like I was able to do it again and I hope it turns out very well. Yeah, I hope it does for you too. <laughs> How's the body, too? Holding up. Oh, Holding good. up. Good. <laughs> Frida Sparza now on the bars for UCLA. Frida is an amazing athlete. Um, seeing her in the gym, you know, going through everything that she's gone through, I'm so excited to finally see her on bars. She's so beautiful, and as you can tell, her handstands, her toe point, um, it's remarkable. Look at Janelle. Does, does she know that this is only an exhibition? <laughs> <laughs> Janelle's always hyped, no matter what. <laughs> Yeah, we were talking about uh, Janelle's influence on this team and, yes. and coming in last year, a lot of drama, a lot of challenges. And, you know, I, Martin Jarman, the athletic director at UCLA, I think he nailed it. I think it was the perfect hire. She had the right personality. She calmed everything down and she certainly knows the sport and she got the respect quickly from you guys. Yes, 100%. She definitely changed the game, the perspective of what it's like to be in college gymnastics. And I wouldn't, you know, she was definitely that perfect fit. It's like you put that shoe on you and you know it's perfect and I honestly she's the best coach she's the best mentor and I, I'm pretty sure the girls like her I like her <laughs> Whenever we saw her out on the floor of course you know you put on your your game face yes. out here she seemed just so calm and centered and knew where everything was and, mm -hmm. and of course you guys were a really talented team so so that helped out but in in workout did she ever lose it um 
I've never seen her rattle. I don't think she's ever really in practice has gotten mad or anything. Wait, like she's mats. right. She she's she's the bar queen. She loves bars. Bars is her favorite event. So she's gonna do anything and everything to make sure her athletes have fun on that event as well. So we just saw Frida Sparza, who uh, by the way was uh, fourth at Pac 12s on bars a couple of years ago, and now we're gonna see Marzetta Frazier. And I was teasing Mars before about her sixth year, but because of COVID and because of an injury, she's still here and she still looks great. And you know we're gonna talk to her later on and it's similar to what I was asking you about keeping that passion shoveling coal into that fire and just keeping it going for six years that's a long time because there's no real off season in gymnastics you take breaks but you got to get back in the gym exactly and Mars has done that Mars has had her time to herself but also knows that she has a job to do and seeing her back out here for her six year in a row as beautiful as always as you can tell, like this, she's a bar queen, so I'm really excited to see what this year has in store for her. She was a Pac-12 champion on this event yes, a couple of years ago. She was. She was. I'm very happy to see her back because her performance quality is like no other. Exactly. On beam, on floor, I don't know, just her face expressions, everything. It's a complete package. Well, since you guys lived in this sport and still do, <laughs> how about th this is the number that jumps out at me with her 131 routines without a fall. How's that possible? It's possible. I trip it's on very, the way to the car. I was like, it's very possible. I mean, Mars, she has the mindset of what she wants, and with everything that she's done, she knows the consistency part of it. And so that's what she's done with every routine. She'll go up, hit her routine, and then be like, okay, I did what I needed to do. Uh, how much time are you spending around the team? Are you still close to the team, or do you need to silo and kind of do your own thing? Um, the team, I try to do as much as I can to, you know, make sure everybody's okay. Obviously, I'm not here. Yeah. So it's it's a little more difficult, but being able to have this atmosphere and making sure they're all good and enjoying their time, I love it and can't wait to see how this year turns out for them for sure. I miss see it. You at some meets this year, will you come by? I'm, I'm hoping. Yeah. I'm hoping with my schedule. I'm hoping I'm going to come out and see you know them in action. It's really cool to see you around because even the inner squads that I've been to, you've been there. I yes. said, isn't she training? I thought she was out of state. Yeah. Yes, I try to do as much as I can. I love the team so much. I miss it a lot. I know it means a lot to them too to have you here because then they know that you have a lot on your plate. So. Yes. This is Emily Lee, the junior from Los Gatos up in Central California. I mean, was in and out of the uh, bars lineup, missed a couple of meets and came back and, and responded with a 9875 at the Iowa State meet. She's gonna get a restart here as Janelle pulls her aside. Uh, help me because it's been now, I think, eight months since they called the gymnastics meet. When you stop on a routine, you get a minute to get back on? Is that what it is? Do we know? Uh, no. I you, always forget that one. No, you actually have 30 seconds. 30 seconds, yes. oh, wow. All right. 30 seconds to get back onto your event. I'll probably ask you that again next year. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're good. Just finishing off strong. I think this is a good benefit of Meet the Bruins, too. You know, when you have a mistake like that, this is why it's important to get out in Polly to kind of get those kinks out with the fans. And exactly. The team, you know, yeah. Yes. Did you like Meet the Bruins? I love Meet the Bruins. I've done it twice. Mm -hmm. So I was I was really happy that I was able to do, you know, my freshman year and my sophomore year. So yeah. um, it's really fun. It's a cool experience getting all your, you know, what you can do, what you can't do, like right. in and out, having the fans. It's an amazing experience. It feels like a real meet to me personally. Yeah, giving the fans the first look. Exactly. Very exciting for them and building up the energy yep. and everything. This was a Miss Val invention. <laughs> she wanted to get you guys in here so, exactly. so your first meet, you weren't all nervous. You've yes. been in here already before. Yes. Um, we're going to get you out of here, but people want to know yes. after, after Paris. Oh, my God. You don't have to come in, but <laughs> you'd only be a junior. Um, I know you're coming back to L.A. Yes, I am. you got to go to school. <laughs> as long as you're here, I'm just saying. Um, I'm taking it day by day, month by month. Um, we'll see what happens after 24, but I'm definitely rooting for the girls this year, and I guess we'll have to see. Way to put her on the spot. I know. So <laughs> put a bear trap.
up out. And she's a veteran. She walked right around it. Great to see you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good luck in Paris. Thank We're looking you. forward to it. Jordan Childs, Olympic silver medalist, gold at the 2022 World Championships. By the way, the World Vault silver medalist. Eight perfect ten. World Vault their time at UCLA on floor and bars. And last year, two-time NCAA champion on the bars and the floor. And still a big name and a house favorite inside. Still, whether she's in a Leo or sitting with us. Thanks, Jordan. Is that the plan? Well, I'll, I'm here for whatever my team needs me to do. Right now on the plan, it's bars and floor that we're concentrating on. I trained a little beam and vault in the summer, so if it's there, it's there, but I trust my team to have it under control. Yeah, and we're fired up to see you on floor. You were great at the NCAAs and 995. Was that one of the best floors of your career? That was the best floor of my career, hands down. That's good timing. Absolutely. The, the biggest speed of the year on floor. Hey. And, and today you're in the you're in the anchor spot. Are you gonna be the anchor this year for the fourth quarter dance party? Whatever my team needs me to do, regardless, the anchor that you're gonna get is gonna blow the roof off of any establishment that we're in. Uh, Mars, because you've been here for, for the six years, talk to me a little bit about BJ Doss, who choreographs all the floors for you guys. I don't think she gets enough credit. Oh, of course, you guys are out there executing it, but yeah. I don't know how she makes them all so different. BJ is so out of our league. It, we're so <laughs> lucky to have her. She is larger than life, so incredibly creative, such a trendsetter. Like, she is just, I aspire to be BJ. I look up to her as a mentor as far as expanding my life beyond gymnastics. She's the whole package. Mars, I, I can tell you that a lot of people are very excited to have you back for that sixth year. So you take care of that ankle. Thank you. Right? Take care of the freshman. Of course, you got it. And then we'll see you during the year. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time, as always. It's fun to watch. Likewise. Thank you. Mark Zetta Frazier, the 2021 uneven bars champion in the Pac-12, and then last year finished fourth on the floor with that 995 in the NCAAs. A lot of other big names back. Jade Carey, dominant last year for Oregon State. One of the greatest gymnasts on the planet. Miley O'Keefe is money. I would pay to watch her on the beam. How about MJ Frazier? Bars' little sister up at Cal, sophomore now, is that right? Sophomore, yeah. Sophomore now. Hannah Sharp at Arizona State, leading the Gym Devils. Brennan Nault at Stanford. And I was looking at the Pac-12 preseason poll. Remember last year, there was a four-way tie in the Pac-12. Utah, UCLA, Cal, and Oregon State, a four-way tie in the regular season. And the preseason poll this year shakes out the same way. Utah, UCLA, Cal, Oregon State, and then Arizona State, Stanford, Washington, and Arizona. And of course, after the regular season, we all meet at the Maverick Center in West Valley City, just outside of Salt Lake. There's BJ Doss right there, handles all the floors, and we'll see her in the uh, fourth rotation tonight. Um, and you told me before, you're gonna work Pac-12s this year. Yes, and I was just about to tell you, I've never been to the Maverick Center, I don't think. Oh, it's fun. It's, uh, <laughs> it holds about 10,000. Okay. It's intimate, the crowd's right on it. Of course, Utah gets a pretty good home court advantage, mm -hmm. but everybody turns out for it, and it's, you'll love it because we get there like eight o'clock in the morning, we leave at 10 o'clock at night. Most of that is filled with gymnastics. Oh my goodness, you're right about filling the stands because Ms. Val literally put us all in a group text of who is, who is going to be in the UCLA family section I need names now yeah <laughs> so she wants it already <laughs> yeah it's uh so it'll be the fourth year in a row that it's been in uh in West Valley City at the Maverick Center that's that's in March all right we move on to the balance beam we just finished the bars with Emmy Lee so let's start off the beam also with Emmy Lee this is a good event for Emmy. She was eighth at the Olympic trials back in the day, eight times as the leadoff last year and went nine nine or better I just also love seeing her hard work pay off. I spoke with Janelle and she said, Emily is one of the funniest individuals you will ever meet and I concur. She just has a way to make you laugh, I don't know. And she's also very relatable as well. Beautiful for Clay. I also love seeing how calm and confident she is up on that balance beam, only being four inches. Split leap looks harder than, or excuse me, is harder than it looks. 
Oh, absolutely. Even even a full turn on the beam is challenging. Nothing's easy on that four-inch piece of wood. I will say, when I was on the team, I didn't do balance beam, but I did participate in the full turn challenges. And so I, that's exactly what UCLA would like, right? They yep. want that kind of lead off, and uh -huh. then you have Malabuyo in the anchor spot. It's and looking good. You need three more good ones in between. Mm -hmm. I don't know, to me, the, the beam is, is like, putting in golf so much of it is mental yes. obviously there's a, a physical element to it but if you can get in that right frame of mind where you're pumped but not too much you know you, you still got to connect all your elements you got to put aerials into it and emily emmy lee uh eighth at the olympic trials i don't know she's always been such a calming effect that's why she's in the leadoff spot caitlin rosen Rosen's busy tonight, her first night inside Polly. I think they're just trying to get all the all the nerves out. <laughs> the great U.S. national team experience. But when you come to college, it's different, right? Because now it's not just about you. It's really a, yep. a team situation. It's all about the team and the success of the team. And for gymnastics to be a very individual sport, and you're always really competing for yourself, that was the, I feel like that's the biggest adjustment when it comes to gymnasts, especially coming from the elite world. You're really focused on the team and doing your job for the team. That's why Mars kept saying, whatever the team needs, I'm there. You know, she really kept yeah. focusing on that because that's what's most important. Six year veteran and a captain, Mark Zetta Frazier knows exactly what this team needs and is ready to fill those spots. <laughs> you mentioned Caitlin's been really busy, but when I say we're gonna see her in the all around, you definitely need to expect her in that. So yeah. it's really cool to see her do her thing. Yeah, she'll be back on the floor as well in the three spot. Put together a series. I also thought that was interesting too when I was watching her train. Her series is very late in the routine. She does all of her leaps and stuff first, but usually you, you'll see gymnasts get the series out of the way. Because you, you just want it over with? Or oh, yeah. Because you have more energy at the top of your routine as well? I feel like both. It kind of just depends. But um, yeah, literally before her dismount, her series is the last skill, which is really cool. So the dismount. Hold on to it. Fine. One minute. Fine for that land. Finishes with a smile. Texas Connections, down to Texas and takes a bow. Oh, I hope she adds that in during the year. That's awesome. Everybody's got to put their signature on it. I think signature is very important, absolutely. Well, and that's one of the things in Valerie Condos Field. She brought that to UCLA and made sure she encouraged you guys to show your personality. Chris Waller carried it. Janelle McDonald, just the same thing. You have to let gymnasts be themselves, right? Because the personality is so much of it, especially in college, I fully believe it affects the, the judges. Yeah, I think because especially if you're coming from the elite world, it's so serious and just very, you rarely see elite gymnasts smile. So when they're coming into this college, environment it's really cool to see them just let loose and let their personality shine because that's what really it's all about and then you're connecting with the fans too and emma andres now in the three spot for ucla a little tweak to the lineup this is her favorite event now a graduate student from the bay area yeah, she's a fifth year, and I was speaking with Janelle, and she mentioned that she just had so much more gymnastics to give, so she's really taking full advantage of this last year that she has. Yeah, last year she was limited, I think, to three exhibitions, two of them on beam, one on floor. So looking to get in the lineup much more to stay healthy throughout the year. And that is one of the problems at UCLA. Not, is it, not only is it always a big team, it's a deep team, so mm -hmm. it's hard to get in lineups. Yeah, depth is really important, but especially if you want to fight for your spot, you got to really show that consistency, and I think that's what's important, especially when it comes to the events that, you know, depth may lack a little bit. I've always joked that uh, the two toughest meets of the year are the Pac-12 championships and any UCLA workout. The workout, yes, agreed. Because of the competition in that room. <laughs> exactly. Beautiful this not round up, double twist. That was pretty clean for an opener. Let's go back and look at her feet on the beam. Yeah, one thing about this girl, she can dance and I love that she adds it, you know. 
Yeah, that's an element I, I, I don't think about much on the beam, the dance, but it really mm -hmm. comes into play. Yeah. You have to carry and connect. Exactly, yeah, and especially with the artistry, when you think about this sport, it's artistic gymnastics, so bringing that to, you know, the make or break event, that tends to be a little scary or just harder to, yeah, focus, you know, get the nerves down, but. UCLA as a team is ranked fifth in the country on the beam last year, and I mentioned earlier, 49 or better in 12 out of their 14 meets, eight scores of 49-5 or better, including four of the top eight all-time beam scores at UCLA. Season high, 49-675 at the LA Regional. And that score right there is amazing. 49-675? Yeah. yeah. That's above a 9.9 .9 average, I think. Yeah, if you go back and look at it, <laughs> I, I think they threw out a 9.925 or something. Oh, it's that's ridiculous. Too yeah. low. That's too low of a score. Once again, here's Shea Campbell. Gonna do a wolf turn for us. Single, double. double. Yeah. Held on to it, yep. <laughs> this little wobbly. Ben was tough for her last year. This is the only one I think that she struggled with consistency. She would throw nine nine pluses up and then have trouble the next week. And and that is the nature of the beat for some gymnasts. Yeah, like I said, it's that make or break event and you really need to dial it in to make sure each skill is right on or even sometimes you can feel it in the air which is really cool if you feel you're going to be a little off and maybe adjust yourself but one thing i do love about shay is that she shows up every day in practice to be the best version of herself she has so much integrity and you know she's putting in the work to be there for her team the way she needs to be love this dismount and held on to it She'll work at it. I mean, it'll look pretty good to me, and it'll be even better when you come back and see UCLA start their season. We mentioned Janelle McDonald, the, uh, the head coach for the Bruins, and you also see Autumn Grable there with the high tens, one of the assistant coaches. Uh, Autumn Grable, her husband Kyle Grable, and we talked about BJ Doss before. There she is. Autumn works on uh, beam and floor. And she and her husband, I think were, they were coaching in the Midwest. Yes. And when they got a chance to come to California and UCLA. <laughs> Selena Harris. Because she came in with such high accolades, because we focused on her so much, and because <laughs> she was so great last year, so good. I have to keep reminding myself, she hasn't even begun her sophomore season. Oh, no. It's no. She was so amazing her freshman year and I just couldn't I remember speaking with her and I said do you get nervous and she said no I've never nerves have never really affected me Lucky even when her. she was younger and I said wow you know because I think nerves can get to you in multiple stages of your career um, but for her to just be so incredibly solid as a freshman and I just love her last year she went nine nine or better on being 12 times, yep. including the last 10 of the season, <laughs> which half of that is postseason. The biggest, most pressure packed meets, and she was at her best. So maybe she's right. She doesn't get nervous. She does not. It's like she goes on autopilot and knows exactly what she needs to do every weekend. And even when she's up there smiling, you know, she, she's not, she doesn't second guess herself, which is really, really cool to see. Just like Adds that. a new dismount, double twist. She had a 9975 at the LA Regional in this building. So that was obviously a very big meet. UCLA yep. trying to advance to the NCAs. And she crushed it. It was her best of the year. I, I don't know if she doesn't realize she gets nervous or she just is able to channel that energy the right way. All the best ones can. What do you think of this dismount? I love it, yeah, because she did a one and a half last year, but adding that extra half and just her ability to be able to find the landing. And she actually upgraded her first pass, or I wouldn't say upgrade, she changed her first pass on floor, so it'll be really cool to see. She's no longer doing a full land, but she's doing a double lay. And so for her to just have a pocket of skills, for her to just pull out whenever she wants to is really cool. Well, we thought 
Emma Andres was going to go in the anchor spot, but they moved her up into Esparza's spot. So that means Malabuyo, who is always the anchor on beam, is once again the anchor on beam. And to me, this is the most difficult position in this sport is to be the anchor on beam for a big program in a big arena and she thrives on it. She likes the position. So much of this is personality going triple. Oh, was it a double? It was a double, Just a yep. double wall. She really wound it up. I was waiting for one more. <laughs> You're so right. She really does thrive in this position. Even just her smiling after that double wall. You're right, it is a very difficult position to be in because you have to hit no matter what, regardless if, you know, the first five hit or if you have a fall, you know, you have to really dial, you know, you have to just put, always be yeah, dialed in. There's always room for for improvement when you get to the anchor. Even if you, like said, five for five, yep. you can you can knock a nine nine off the board with something higher. Exactly. So they're always leaning on her. But she <laughs> said when we talked to her earlier tonight, she said, I like the responsibility. She, and she loves the pressure of it too. Yeah. She delivers. What's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> there it is. That's the best smile in the building. And I'm telling you, 95% of the time you see Emma at Polly or anywhere in the world, that's what she looks like. That's how you recognize her. Okay, here's the big wind up you're talking about. Boom. I, I meant double. to ask her about the wrap. I hope that's uh, just precautionary. Yes, look at this jump sequence. And it, Whoa. That ring jump. Taking your eyes completely off the beam, very difficult. Ten times last year, Malabuyo on beam, 9.85 or better. Season high, 9.975 at the LA Regional, and then came back with a 9.95 at the NCAA semifinals. A couple of years ago against Davis, she had a 10. All right, so Frida Sparza was set to go third. And she now has changed spots with Emma Andres. And so Esparza will close this off on the beam. Janelle mentioned to me that she is most excited about Frida this year because she has worked very hard in practice and in the weight room. We saw her on bars earlier, and she's honestly one of the best bar swingers in the NCAA. But on beam specifically, she's been working on building that confidence because she is a really great performer and has that elite experience as well. So finally seeing her. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't think she had any beams in competition last year. Mm -hmm. Back in 21, she was in the beam lineup at a 9-9 at Arizona. Yep. So she's been there before. Yep, yep. So it's really cool to see, finally, allowing her light to shine through. And some of that dance you were just talking about, some of those elements. And she moves quickly through her routine on the beam. No hesitation. Yes. Wow. Stoic face. Didn't surprise herself. That was clean. That was beautiful. Here's another look at her dismount. Now, if you guys can remember, a lot of gymnasts did the side aerial to the back full, but that rule changed, so a lot of gymnasts had to figure out, okay, what other way can I get off this beam? So you'll see a lot of gainers off the side of the beam, whether it be a cartwheel, back handspring, or the traditional round off dismounts off the end of the beam. Was that one foot? Was she going to that move one Yeah, gainers one foot, yep. So you swing the leg, and that leg helps you twist it around, and... Adam Grable comes over just to go through it again with her, and they both finish with a smile, so I think they got what they wanted. UCLA top five on these last three events last year. Balance beam looks to be a strength once again for UCLA, but of course, this program has always made its signature over on the floor. Fourth quarter dance party. We come back to back inside Polly, and the kids couldn't wait for Christmas, so we moved the meet up. It's Meet the Bruins, we do it every year. Inside Polly, it's the first look at the new edition of UCLA and this world-renowned program. Jordan Giles is here, even though she's not part of the program this year, she is prepping for the Olympics in Paris in 2024, but she's still playing with the crowd and still rocking the Bruin blue. Janelle McDonald, the head coach, joins us now. And coach, I called you the MVB last year, the most valuable Bruin. With all the chaos and all the drama and all the changes to the school, you came in, you had that steady hand, you calmed everything down. You end up winning the regular season along with three other teams in this conference, and then you go to the NCAAs. What did you learn in your first year at UCLA? I mean, I, I, 
it definitely was a year of growth, that's for sure. And, you know, what I really learned is that, you know, gymnastics starts to take care of itself when you start to take care of culture and you build relationships with your student athletes. And that was our focus last year. We had a blast. And, and the thing I take away from last year is just a lot of pride for what we did. And we got a lot of belief in what we can continue to build here this year. I loved when they were warming up and you were yelling, yay, finals are over. Because <laughs> when I mentioned, or I had spoken to you earlier and you mentioned there was a lot of high stress and a lot of emotions because everybody was stressing about finals and all the tests that they had to take. How was their energy today coming into Poly? Was it better? Could you feel the relief? Just Yeah, there's definitely a weight lifted off their shoulders uh, <laughs> coming in here today. Um, we had a couple athletes that actually were a little bit late to warm ups because they were finishing a final. And so, you know, but we talked about being adaptable and being resilient and that's exactly what they're doing they're showing up they're having a blast and they're they're really excited to be out here in front of our fans today Janelle as much as any other sport that I know of you as a head coach have to rely on your assistants we already talked about about Kyle and Autumn Grable and BJ Doss of course this is her event this is the floor talk about your staff a little bit and what they mean to you you know the thing about this staff is that I feel like we're all completely on the same page as far as taking care of our students athletes as people first and you know we show up every single day to help them have a great experience and to really help them be the best that they can be and I don't think I could ask for more than that from a staff yeah you know UCLA is a leader in a lot of areas and I think you were the first team that I knew talked openly about the mental health of athletes yeah you know it's, it's everything and I think that you know we have amazing resources here at UCLA for our student athletes but I really think developing great communication with your student athletes is really going to help them be the best that they can be in and out of the gym and feel their best and not every day is easy and so if they're able to communicate that with you then you're going to be able to go far with them janelle we'll get you out of here on this when uh, when miss val was here valerie condos field she used to tell me what the personality was of the team at the meet the bruins meet what's this team about you know this this team is about joy this team is about fun and this team is about hard work and i don't think i could ask for anything more than that i'm really excited about this season and i can't wait to see where it takes us Great work, Janelle. It was fun watching you last year. Uh, I don't know how you walked between the raindrops. That was a fantastic coaching job last year. Thank you. Appreciate it. Janelle McDonald now in her second season as the head coach of UCLA. They want to share the Pac-12 title last year and led the Bruins back to the NCAAs for the first time since 2019. So they got a quad meet scheduled on January 13th. On the schedule, if you look for UCLA, it says January 6th, TBD. So I'm hoping they will fill that spot and we get to start earlier. Oh, yeah. But we'll see. I would love to start earlier. Because it's, you know, everything has changed. But look at that. I mean, that, the quad, look at that lineup. Oklahoma, LSU, UCLA, and Utah. That's pretty good. Even the last one, too, Clemson, because that's a, an yeah. inaugural team. I'm yeah. very excited. Yeah, that'll be them. the first time that I've seen Clemson in person in gymnastics, not just on TV. So I'm looking forward to that one as well. All right, so now we go to the fourth quarter dance party. It's It's been the signature of this program as long as I can remember. Uh, Miss Val started it, and then when B.J. Doss came in, they just kind of continued it. The floors have gone viral. Sophia De Jesus, one of the er earliest, and Hallie Mosette. Kaylin Ohashi went off the rails, and Nia Dennis. I mean, all of a sudden, Mars, Jordan, every one of these exploded. I remember almost daily you had to update how many hits they were getting on YouTube. Yes, I remember when Sophina went viral, and it was kind of cool just to be on the team for three of these, because I was on the team. I was a senior for Caitlin's first round of going viral yeah, that's right. and then she went viral a second time the next year and it's just been really cool to see social media just grow and grow because when Sophina went viral that was just a million views that was crazy but then you fast forward to Caitlin when it's like over 20 million that's views right. you know so I just love I think it's just an attest to the legacy of the routines and how we really like to tell stories and bring unique movements to the floor routines and the music and you know it proves literally every year <laughs> even michelle obama tweeting on this one now that's what i call fierce you're a star nia dennis everybody got involved in, uh, they were on all the talk shows they yes were on ellen yes uh, they were on the morning talk shows good morning america yep so UCLA was number one in the country on this event last year. They averaged, averaged over a 49-6, averaged. 
That's a good, that's the range you want to be in. That's a good range that's for nationals. That's is what that is. They went 49-4 or better eight times. They had two individual gymnasts, Childs and Campbell, in the top 10 nationally. But again, because that, that score was so amazing, they were dropping 9-9 pluses last year. I mean, you really had to score for it to count. That's how you know when you're a powerhouse, when you're dropping nine nines and just the caliber of the gymnastics and the skills that they bring to the sport. And I just love, I love seeing it. <laughs> so it's really cool. It's really, really cool to see. There's BJ now in her fifth season with uh, UCLA. She's worked with Beyonce, with Usher, with Pink, Ariana Grande, Justin Bieber, Nicki Minaj. She performed at the Grammys. She's worked in movies and television. And she was a gymnast back in the day at Washington. She was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was. She was at Utah for a season. Jordan Child's looking up at the screen. I think Jordan, Jordan's got a little jealousy that she's not part of this whole thing right now. I know. As she prepares for the Olympic Games. But, you know, this is such a fun event. And if you're a gymnast, to get in this room in front of fans and not having to worry about judges and work with your teammates and see what the freshmen have and, and see what the seniors and the 60-year seniors are bringing back and how healthy everybody is, can't help but smile. Exactly. I love jo I just love that she travels out here from time to time to still be with her team, you know, and I know that means a lot to them. So there's nothing better than uh, being in here. <laughs> Jordan Childs, the Olympian, moving the springboard off. <laughs> be careful. <laughs> Everybody said, don't hurt yourself. But so many times I've been in here when UCLA is close, a small lead, or trailing going in to the final rotation. And of course, because it's the Olympic order, the visiting team has to finish yep. on the beam. On the balance beam. And I've seen UCLA come from behind so many times and right in front of the student section, you've been out there. I yeah. mean, it's amazing. I, I try to tell my friends who just watch, you know, the stick and ball sports, you got to come and you got to watch the UCLA student section at a gymnastics meet because not only are they on their feet and cheering, they know the routine. Oh yeah, it's the floorography we like to call it, and they and they. It's really cool to see them take the time to learn it, and they will walk down from the stairs where Jordan is and do the floor routines with the with the athletes and just. I think that's what it's all about, really, just including the fans and so they can feel a part of the team as well. And there's an opportunity tonight for a lot of parents to come and bring kids because, as you mentioned a couple of times tonight, UCLA just finished finals. Yes. So it was like a parade getting off campus. The yeah. cars just lined up getting out of here for the for the holiday break. And and so if you if you're a, a mom or a dad with a couple of young daughters that are in club gymnastics, this was a great meet to come to because they didn't have to worry about the scores and and they could just sit and focus on their heroes like Brooklyn Moores, former Canadian Olympian, and enjoy gymnastics. And it's funny, I brought my own daughters who are young and in gymnastics to the meet. They don't care about the score. They just want to know who everybody is. They know half the names coming in. And this is what they all love, the floor. And Brooklyn Moores starts us off. Just watch her artistry. I just think she's the most artistic gymnast in the world. Just the way she draws you in. I have chills. <laughs> what is it you like so much about it? 
we'll take a look Everything back at her from her face here. expression yep. and just the way she's able to move her arms in just the most beautiful and graceful way. She's telling a story. The music is from Euphoria, and it really... I think the story she's trying to tell is, you know, high schoolers are just like all the emotions that they go through when going through puberty and everything sure. like that. But I think she just emulates that so well. And it's amazing. It's always fun uh, when you talk about the character that they assume. Mm -hmm. BJ tells me, this is the story and you're this person. And I think they get in, get into the character, get into the music, and it just kind of channels through them. Yes. But when you do it on air and I hear you, then I can follow along with it. I, I imagine, you know, you're a shopkeeper, a <laughs> girl in Paris, and you know, BJ has all these elaborate, uh -huh. you know, the scenes and, and what it's like. And, and so then I can get into it a little bit more. And I, I forget it's a competition at some point. I think that's the it's point. It's a performance. For forgetting it's a competition, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think it helps the gymnast too. Emily Lee has been busy tonight. We saw her anchor on bars and open on beam. And now in the two spot on floor. There's another new floor routine and I think it's just as good as last year's Shang-Chi. She jumped into the lineup mid-season at a 9.93 different times. That was her career high. Really good. She did a layout for that last pass because it is Meet the Bruins. Yeah, you're going to water things down a little yep, bit, right? Yep, save the body. Um, this is their first time, I think, on all competition surfaces, so we will see a double pike at the end of that routine. But that was really good. I love watching her do her thing. In the course of a season, and you're mm -hmm. training and you have a meet, say, on Friday night, how many times would you do an entire floor routine during the week? During the week? You got to be smart about it. So yeah. I would say maybe... Definitely twice, but you have to time it out in a way where you're not doing hard landings like the day before the meet. Um, but it depends on the gymnast. So I was the gymnast that needed as many reps as possible, but then, <laughs> but then there are also some gymnasts that, you know, can have one solid day where they are doing it on hard surfaces and stuff like that and be good and really just work on, you know, dance or, or drills or anything that can help them, you know, elevate. So. Like Mars, you know, she needs to save her ankles and stuff like that. So it's really just dependent on the gymnast needs. Uh oh, what's happening now? They are oh. doing their fashion show. <laughs> <laughs> Showing off the Leos that the is, girls is that Emma? got to. I can't see who it's this is Caitlin. Oh, it's Caitlin. Yep. Yeah, Freshman Caitlin Newcomb. Rosen, yeah. Even look at her face. I love her face expression right now. <laughs> but her Leo is inspired by powerful witch characters. With a classic corset in there. There you go. There's a better look at it. And a better look at Caitlin. And she plans to cast Bruin spells on the judges and the audience. I really, really love this routine. It has a very kind of cool, creepy vibe to it. It reminds me a lot of, you know, Gracie Kramer's routine or Madison Preston. Yeah, we remember Gracie, that's right. So U.S. national team experience, Kaylin Rosen comes from Texas, and she said, and this is a quote, ever since I was a little kid, I dreamed of having a UCLA floor routine. Well, sometimes dreams come true.
I loved watching your reaction. <laughs> I was frightened there me. in the middle. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a really, really cool routine and just, again, shows BJ's skill. Yeah. I just don't know how she's able to do it. And I mean, Caitlin, how many routines has she choreographed and then all the dance she's done with the celebrities and yet she comes up with fresh stuff. Right. And you're right, you nailed it. There was, I had a flashback to Gracie Kramer with mm -hmm. that that frightening robotic thing yes, that she did. Yes, the that, ticking. Yes, it, and, and remember, Gracie got a 10 on that. I think her last performance at Polly. Yeah. So yeah, that one that one's interesting. And I will tell you, when UCLA travels and they're in other arenas, their fans really watch mm -hmm. because they know that it's special. They it know really, it's something different. It draws you in. It's amazing. All right, here's Selena Harris. What do we know about this, Leo? Jenny from the block. <laughs> <laughs> Super Bowl inspired. I like it. A little spice and sass, okay? Yes. Sure. Like she needs any more. <laughs> I mean, she's, she's bringing that already. She's also really great at performing, and she has a new routine, but what I like is that she's keeping the Selena intro, and I believe that's going to be her signature thing throughout her four years. Yeah, I was wondering, we heard it during the uh, during the warm-up, uh, Taylor Swift. I'm wondering how many times we're going to hear Taylor Swift this year oh, goodness. on floors. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, she went 9-9 nine -nine or better 12 times, including at the NCAA semifinals. Different tumbling pass for her first pass, double A. She did a full in all year last year. Oh, very good. <laughs> wow. Let's go back a little bit. Well, that's going to be a fun one. Absolutely. And I like the double A on her, too, because the full in was the biggest full in I think I've ever seen. And I just love that she's able to just swap it out for another E pass. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty comfortable in the air, isn't she? I mean, look at this. I think she sticks it, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> Opening exhibition of the year. Look at the height on the stack. And, and even as she controls that. The landing too. Uh, like yeah, I see it every day. <laughs> Ain't no thing. Oh, here we go. I like it. They're, they're bring, bringing out all the, the new faces. We saw Rosen and now Naya Reed. Yeah. Transfer from Florida. Yeah, introduce yourself. Make sure these people know. They all knew anyway. Bruin gymnastics fans, they read up. They know who's coming. All right, here's what uh, Naya says about her Leo. She's a Delta, so she's paying homage to that. Channel my inner diva. I like it. Absolutely. As and it was funny, should. we talked to her about experiencing that UCLA floor party. And we travel across the country, we see all the other teams, they do talk about it, they know what it is. I think there's, they're a little envious if they don't go to UCLA, they wanna come here. When, when when UCLA has a meet here and the other the opposing team has finished beam, they all walk over and watch the last two or three floors. Mm -hmm. And even they wanna see it. Yep. This draws you in and this routine has a lot of energy and I feel that it's gonna be hard for people to sit still in their chairs and not dance with her. She had three individual wins last year in the SEC or at Florida, and two of them were perfect tens. Yeah. Yeah. 
Double leg. So oh, I can't wait till the right? second gym, this place is going to go crazy. <laughs> that was supposed to be a combination yeah. pass, but again, this is the reason why we have Meet the Bruins, is to get out there. Just an exhibition. Yep. Yeah, her dance elements are fantastic. Wasn't that I, so much fun to watch? She's and so this is expressive. how she is in practice. This is exactly how she Look how big in all the movements are. Yeah. I mean, she fills that floor. All right, who's next? Is it, is it Shay? This is Shay, the yeah. queen. Shay Campbell. <laughs> Shay, a former Pac-12 floor champion back in 2021. And last year, was simply fabulous on the floor. All 12 of her floors were 9-9 nine, nine or better. All of them. So good. And her Leo is inspired by the Marvel movie Black Panther. Yes, it is. And I just need to mention, when I first witnessed this routine, my jaw dropped, and it stayed dropped the entire time. Janelle was cracking up. I just... <laughs> <laughs> it's so, and I don't know how she's able to elevate and make the routine better each year because even her freshman year, that routine was so good. And then sophomore year and then junior and then this senior year routine. Sophomore year, she had two perfect tens on floor. Last year, 995, six times, including the NCAA semis on day two. Finished second. Here we go. forever <laughs> <laughs> very good well that one's got a chance to go viral oh 
There's so much potential yeah. in so many routines right now. They're so good. So high, out of, out of frame, right? Yeah, I mean, just exploding off the floor. Look at that. Plenty of time. And she was one of the athletes that had a final right before this. Walked into Polly right on time and had to, she said she had to rush doing her makeup. I said, girl, it looks so good. I couldn't even tell. <laughs> need, need I say that across the country, every team, the gym, women's gymnastics, always one of the highest GPAs on, on campus, oh, always. Yeah. And it's, I, I don't know how you do it because you have so much time, but it's part of discipline, time management, sacrifice. Oh, and here yes. comes Emma Malabuyo. Do you see the fringe? Yep. And there's the, the smile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is BJ designing these? Is she no, part of that? The, no, it's fully the girls. The girls design their own Leos, yep. Take you back in time to a flapper girl era, sure, 20s. Jazz and swing. You know, look, look at the, what, what we just came out of, out of Shea Campbell's to Emma's. Completely different subject matter, the music, every yep. completely different. And the only common denominator is the one in the background, BJ Doss. Everything else different. The Leo is so fitting for that jazz routine too. That is fun. So good. Finishing off with the brass and a little jazz on that final tumbling pass. Yeah, just take a look at these leaves. Not only is she doing a switch ring, but she's extending past the 180 that the judges look for. And not only is she powerful, but she's got the flexibility. Full package. Yeah, when you see a gymnast go by that 180, it's impossible to ignore. It, even I notice that. Yeah. You know, I, I see leaps, I'm like, oh, that's fine. But then when you see past the 180, you go, wow. So, how, yeah. I didn't know just... bodies could bend like that. Here comes Mark Zetta Frazier. <laughs> yeah. She's been performing in this room for the last five years, getting the sixth, and is ready to be a team leader. And she says hello to Jordan Childs. <laughs> Pink cheetah print with crystals radiates the fearless spirit of the true Jersey girl. And maybe that's one of the things that, that makes the UCLA uh, floors so personal is that it's a lot of times BJ and the athlete will pull something from their past, something they're comfortable with, something yep. that they feel expresses them. So, yes. so they're in their comfort zone. That they can resonate and that's what's gonna help you perform it even better. Yeah. Mars was fourth at the NCAAs on floor last year with a 995. And if you were with us earlier when we talked to her, she said, without a doubt, it was the best floor of her career.
love a good breakdown. <laughs> Who doesn't? She's good, too. That was how she used to finish floors, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember that. My kids were doing that at home. Saving the ankles? Yep, saving the ankles. Precisely. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> I love that ending, yes. Home run. <laughs> Good for Mars. You know, this is gonna be like a victory lap this year for her. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the season she never thought she'd have, but who knew COVID was coming? Who knew that she'd miss an entire season with an injury? And now she's smarter, she's a veteran, yes. so she'll protect that ankle all year long, and it'll be fun. I love that ending, that's so good. It also kind of reminds me of um, Peng Peng Lee. She also took a sixth year and that's not something. Yeah, that's right. And I remember she was a junior my freshman year and she would kind of joke and say, we could graduate in the same year. Little did I know <laughs> and, and that would happen. <laughs> um, but yeah, same thing. She didn't expect to take a sixth year and be there that long. So it's just really cool. And I think it's gonna be kind of a little bit of parallel because Peng went out with the bang and I think Mars will too. She just gotta take care of those ankles. Yeah, I always tell people well, the reason I stayed in college for so long, because it was so much fun. It is so much fun. Why leave? Yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden they hand you a box of responsibility and accountability and oh, you gotta goodness. get a job. The whole adulting stay as, thing. Stay adulting, stay as long as you can. All right, we're not quite done. We're gonna come back and talk to the queen. Shay Campbell, we return to meet the Bruins live on the Pac-12 no Network from Polly. even stronger and I'm so excited to see where like life takes me after this. Uh, this team is ranked number five in the preseason. I think that's a good ranking. It shows respect for you guys, but it also allows some room to grow. Yes, for sure. We're definitely looking to continue and grow. I think that this team is more than capable of being number one. So I'm just really excited to see where we go. Uh, I'll, I'll get you out of here on this one. Uh, beside yourself, tell me somebody that is going to just blow our doors off this year. Who's been impressing you? Frida Esparza. Um, I am so, so proud of her and how hard she's worked to get back into the lineups. So I'm really excited for you guys to see how she does. Um, and I'm super proud of her. Yeah, she, she's fought through injuries and is back. We saw her tonight in the lineup. That's yes. excellent. That wasn't a name I was expecting. So once again, you come through in the clutch. Yes, thank you so much. Thanks, Shay. Go talk to the kids. I know they're waiting for of you. Of course. Go Bruins. Shay Campbell, senior now at UCLA. Remember, she won the Uneven Bars Championship in the Pac-12 back in 2021. Uh, she has been a team leader. She has been an inspiration and, of course, a house favorite. As you take a look now at the upcoming gymnastics on the network, uh, January 20th, we got Cal and Washington. Again, everybody in this conference is ranked in the top 25. Uh, it'll be fun to, to see uh, Oregon State and Utah. Utah now with Carly Dockendorf as the head coach. The Red Rocks are loaded once again, and they're, they've just gone through a coaching change, much like UCLA did. And again, I, I can't say enough about Janelle McDonald, how, what a job she did last year when things could have gone sideways, and she just came in and handled it all and allowed the gymnasts just to be student athletes once again. And I think it's really cool because she talked about the communication that they have from coach to athlete. And I think a lot of the times, even when you're younger, you know, you're afraid to talk to your coach and you kind of just want to do what they tell you. But even me just watching practice, the gymnasts are more than comfortable going up to her and really just it's a it's a team effort. And you can really see that. And they're really working together to make sure that this team is really successful. And this program's always been like that. The coaches have always been accessible and it's always been kind of a, a co-op everybody working together on it they they want you guys to take ownership of your own uh, your own performances yeah. your own routines your training and all of that um, anybody jump out at you tonight I mean we knew about Selena Harris coming in yeah. um, Malabuyo you know all the usual faces it was great to see like Naya Reed the transfer from Florida very excited to see her second uh, on the vault at the SEC's last year just gonna bolster that lineup as well for UCLA and, and again that was the one lineup last year the vault that maybe UCLA had room to get better yeah I would say you mentioned it Naya Reed and I even when we were speaking to her she just meshed in with the team so well I love seeing Caitlin Rosen get out there she did yeah. the all around and she really killed it and Frida too I we haven't seen her on beam in a while so she really was put in that anchor spot I think right? yeah, yeah. Um, and <laughs> she just she's worked so hard and I'm really happy to see that she's persevered through the injuries and is you know it's finally coming to fruition it was 
was a it was a clean beam routine for her and Shay Campbell just said it too you got to watch Frida Esparza this year and we haven't seen her in the last couple of years because of injuries so yeah we're, we're really looking forward to that uh, this is the thing I love and usually we're not on the air this long after a meet uh, I'm telling you they do this all the time they walk right over you, you know you're not going to see this at a football game sometimes you see it at a basketball game they do it every single time and it's not just UCLA all gymnasts the Red Rocks do it at Utah the Beavs do it up at Oregon State can you imagine taking your young daughter to an Oregon State meet and she gets to go up and talk with Jade Carey I mean, that's that's life-changing for a young kid it's, it's it's great the accessibility of the gymnasts they know who they are and they know what they mean especially to this university Janae it'll be great working with you again I'm happy to have you at the Pac-12 championships you're gonna love it it's a long day get some sleep the night before That'll do it for us, for your producer, David Feldman, Tim Lay, your director, and Janae Honest, I'm Jim Watson, saying so long from Westwood, where we just met the Bruins, the 2024 edition of UCLA Gymnastics, locked and loaded.